I'll now switch to presenting data of our post taxateer phase two trial. Our hypothesis was that previous treatment with docetaxel, i.e. previous chemotherapy, would not alter the biology of the disease if it was AR dependent. And I would refer you to uh, my uh, clinical fellow, Dr. Reed's poster, which is being presented tomorrow for further detailed data on this trial. We have 28 valuable patients recruited to date on this study at the Royal Marsden Hospital. The median baseline PSC in these patients was 523 with a range of 33 to 10,000 uh, PSA and 22 of 28 patients had bone mets uh, on bone scan. Measurable disease was present in 18 of 28 patients. Importantly, many of these patients had multiple lines of prior hormone therapy, including all the patients having previously had LHRA channel logs, all of the patients having had antiandrogens, most of the patients three quarters having had steroids, and half of the patients having had still bestrol as well. These patients are heavily pretreated patients. In fact, many of them have had prior multiple lines of cytotoxics and experimental drugs at our uh, drug development center. 50% of the patients, 14 of 28 at our site, have had a 50% PSA decline in this study. With 9 of 28 patients, about a third of the patients having a 75% fall, and 18% patients in this post taxateer heavily pretreated population having a 90% PSC decline. And these are the PSAs of all the patients, and I know this is a, I guess, a busy graph, with um, essentially showing you, or showing to you, a, a fallen PSA from the baseline of 50% um, or more in, in fact, um, a substantial proportion of the patients. Importantly, eight of these 28 patients are ongoing after more than six months of therapy. Resist criteria. In this study at our site, four of 18 patients to date have had confirmed radiological partial responses, with a further nine of 18 patients have had, having had stable disease at three months, their first evaluation uh, radiologically. We have seen no relationship between previous progression on docetaxel and response to abiraterone. We have in several patients seen symptom relief, decreased analgesic use, and falling circulating tumor cell counts. Time to progression in this study is one, six, seven days, a median of uh, 24 weeks, uh, almost six months. So in summary, in this study, the null hypothesis has been rejected, the drug is safe and well tolerated, with a similar response rate really to that seen in the predostaxel space with radiological and CDC evidence of anti-tumor activity. I want to briefly mention to you and describe to you our translational studies performed on abiraterone on these patients. Before I do that, I want to uh, briefly share with you data that is uh, being submitted in manuscript form uh, soon. And in fact, Howard uh, Shear, uh, Dr. Shear, will present further data on this, uh, this study on uh, Friday. But essentially, we have recently shown that circulating tumor cell counts can, pre can predict um, overall survival both before and after treatment with, um, uh, with anti-cancer drugs, with cytotoxics, uh, after failure of hormonal therapy. In this study, we have shown that CDC counts predict survival. So if you have more than uh, five CDC counts, the median survival in this study was 10.7 months uh, pre-therapy, where if you have less than uh, five CDCs, uh, the median survival was 21.4 months. Importantly, I think this is the key point here, and if I can ask you to focus on the uh, blue and the red uh, survival curves on this graph, in patients who had a high more than five CDC count pre-treatment, so a high circulating tumor cell count before therapy, which stayed high after therapy, their survival was quite poor, 6.8 months overall survival median. But if the patients on therapy switched from being more than five to less than five, their median survival moved to 21.3 months in the blue uh, survival curve here. And you'll hear more about that from uh, uh, Dr. Shear on Friday. But importantly, in our abiraterone trial, we have seen that at baseline, 19 of 49 patients in the pre-chemotherapy uh, trial had more than five CTCs, with 58% of patients having a fall in their CTC count from more than five to less than five. 12 of these patients had a 50% fall in CTC count. In the post-chemotherapy patients, where the CDC counts were, were very high, up to uh, 6,000 in one patient, 75% of patients had more than five CDCs. And again, seven of 21 patients had a fall 
in city seats from more than five to less than five, moving to the good prognostic group. Overall, 13 patients in the post-taxter study had a 50% 50, 50 fall in CDC count. So overall, the CDC data seems to suggest that these patients that are on abirafurone and, and benefiting uh, from therapy may be moving to the better survival group. Finally, I want to share with you briefly data that uh, Dr. Gerda Tard and uh, Dr. Alison Reed, uh, my fellows, are working on in the lab translationally. We have been evaluating the ERG gene rearrangement status on, on all our patients on this study. We only have data on 20 patients to date, but we will soon have data on over 70 patients on these trials. Of the 20 patients that we have data on to date, eight have an ERG gene rearrangement. Seven of these eight patients, 88% of patients, have had a more than 50% PSA decline. Of the 12 patients where there is no ERG rearrangement, 41%, approximately half of the ERG rearrangement group, have had a more than 50% PSA fall, suggesting perhaps in these preliminary data that in the ERG rearranged group there's a higher PSA decline rate than in the other group. Importantly, we have been biopsying patients whenever possible um, at the time of, st or just before starting on abiraterone in this study. We have been evaluating the rearrangement status of the ERG gene um, at the, in the archival tissue diagnosis and just before starting abiraterone, and we have seen no change in these five patients that we have, um, that we have evaluated to date in the ERG gene status at our, on archival biopsy and just before starting abiraterone when they're castration resistant. However, there is increasing complexity to this story, and Dr. Attard's posters, my fellow, uh, tomorrow will show that um, there is increasing complexity of the ERG rearrangement with multiple copies, uh, and as you know, deletion of this rearrangement recently published uh, in Oncogene. And more importantly, in the same patient, in the same tumor, we are seeing heterogeneity of the rearrangement. For example, in one of our abiraterone patients, the presence of both the ETV1 rearrangement and the ERG rearrangement in the same patient's uh, uh, biopsy sample in a TERP uh, tissue. In conclusion, we have shown that CYP17 blockade is safe and inhibits androgen and estrogen synthesis. And I think it's important to notice that at this point, we are not stating that uh, this drug is having an impact purely by inhibiting androgen synthesis. CYP17 blockade has clinically significant anti-tumor activity both in the pre- and post-dostaxel space. Phase three studies of this drug in castration resistance post-dostaxel and pre-dostaxel patients with this disease will commence in 2008. And we plan to evaluate CTC counts as a potential surrogate of clinical benefit in these clinical trials. Finally, I want to thank the many, many people involved in this work, and particularly the patients and their families and carers for all the work done on these trials. Thank you.